We want to read from God's word. Psalm chapter 118. Please, would you stand with me for the reading of the word and then you would sit down after that. Psalm 118, we're going to read from verse number 22 and verse number 23. Can we read ready? Go. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. Would you say amen? amen. What has the Lord done? What has he done? No, I said, what has he done? <laughs> I said, what has God done? They say, it's marvelous in my eyes. <laughs> what has the Lord done? He has made the stone that was what? Rejected to become what? The cornerstone. That's what's marvelous. That's what's marvelous. That the stone that the builders rejected has become what? The cornerstone. Would you say amen? amen? Let every rejection fall off your life. To the glory of God. Rejection. I'm telling you. Some people don't realize how detrimental and how dangerous, how bad, how devastating rejection is. Rejects, rejection is not just bad. It is bad. When bad goes to bad, <laughs> it's another level. But I pray that every spirit of rejection attacking you is broken off your life in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. Now, I want you to understand one thing. It doesn't mean that when I say rejection is broken off your life, that you will never experience rejection again. No, that's not what it means. It actually means that rejection will be staring you at the face, but you keep moving on. It would have no power to deter you or to demoralize you or to break you. Hallelujah. I'm still talking about rejected, but anointed. Take as much notes as you can. The spirit of rejection it's huge reason for many unfulfilled destinies, assignments, dreams, goals, and visions, and aspirations. Sometimes the reason why we never get to fulfill the things that we set out to is because in the process we are attacked by a spirit of rejection. And when you experience rejection a number of times, it demoralizes you. It breaks you. It makes you feel like it saps all the energy, all the excitement, all the strength, all the passion. And you begin to all of a sudden get to a place where it feels like, well, that dream can never be attained. You've been attacked, demoralized, bitten down by a spirit of rejection. But I love it that in the story of David, we see a man that was consistently attacked from the, his birth right to the point of almost his death but continuously exhaled this guy if there was anybody that really suffered rejection in his life David is a good example he suffered it from his birth all the way to the time that he was about to die his own very son Absalom turned against his father rejected it in fact his son wanted him dead wanted the father's throne while the father was still alive rejection all through his life but in spite of all the rejection he continued to excel and that is what i want to declare over your life rejection cannot stop you from excelling no matter how many times how many people in different areas where you experience and suffer rejection it will in the name of jesus it will not stop you from continuing to rise, increase, and fulfill the purpose and the calling of God for your life. Would you say amen to that? Amen. Now, I don't know if I can give you a few things, a few points of maybe one or two things, what rejection, how dangerous, how bad rejection can be. Please, if you're writing, you want to write this down. 
what the spirit of rejection does. Number one, it lies to you about your worth. Are you there, everybody? It does what? It lies. Listen, the spirit of rejection is a lying spirit. It tells you lies all the time about your worth. The spirit of rejection always wants you to see yourself lesser than who you really are. It brings you down. It belittles you. It makes you an entity and nothing. And every time you've, you're fighting to measure up, you're fighting to get to a place because you're looking for that acceptance. Listen, it doesn't matter where you are. You are accepted. Are you hearing me? You don't need to climb to a certain height for you to be accepted. You are already accepted. It puts false uh, impressions in our minds. And you, you begin to feel like, if only I can do up to this level, then I'm going to be accepted. And I'll tell you one thing. There are people that no matter what you do, they'll never accept you. No matter what you do. In fact, some people, the better, the more, the better you perform, the more angry they get. Have you seen people like that? When you're doing well, they get mad. That was one of the cases with David. When he did well, some people got mad. But I want to I wanna declare that if somebody's going to get mad because you're doing well, well, you're going to keep doing well. You're going to keep doing well. Would you say amen again? So rejection lies to you about your worth. Here's how it does it. It manipulates your feelings to make you feel unloved, unwanted, not welcomed. So it does all of that to your feeling. You feel, I'm not wanted. You feel, I'm not accepted. You feel all those things, negative emotions, begin to, they just begin to manifest inside of you. And, and sometimes you can even go to a place where you are accepted, but just because of the spirit of rejection that is on you, it begins to make you feel unwanted. And I'm if you understand that most times, what you feel becomes what you manifest. Come on. Come on, talk to me. You see, when you go to a place and you feel like I'm not accepted, you begin to act like it. Because what you are thinking is what you are living out. As a man thinks in his heart, help me now, so he is. See, who you are is the sum total of your thoughts. And what rejection does, it implants all this kind of thoughts inside of you and they begin to generate negative emotions, negative feelings inside of you. I don't think he wants me. I don't think she wants me. I don't think they want me. I don't think this. I don't. So all that negativity, and maybe they don't even want you. And even if they don't want you, there is someone who wants you. Come on, I said hallelujah. There's someone who wants you. Rejection is dangerous. It is bad. But here's what you've got to know, saints. Even though people may not want you, you have to know that you are not here because of their decisions. You are not here because of their choices. You are where you are because of God's divine choice on your life. In fact, you, you, you did not create yourself. For somebody not to want you, they didn't even create you. Are you still with me? They did not even create you. So when people don't want you, you have to go back to your mind and say, Well, listen, I'm not even here because I wanted to be. God wanted me to be here. So I exist because the creator decided my existence. I am here because God wants me to be here. So no matter what you want, I know what God wants. Are you still hearing me? I know what God wants. You may not want me, but there is a God who wants me. And because he wants me, he created me. And that is why I exist. I am here because God wants me. And let me tell you something. There are some of us who exist not because our parents wanted us. Are you still there? Yeah, listen. Not because our parents wanted us. It is not just the choice of your parents. That, 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 that's why you're here. It is the choice of God. He made that decision. He made that choice.
choice that you should exist in this world, in this planet. And because God made that choice, you have to exist by divine choice. And so when some people or somebody doesn't want you, well, let them deal with it. The one who wants you made you to be here. Are you still hearing me? You are here by divine choice. Can I hear you say amen? amen. So let them deal with it. You are already here. Because they didn't create you, they can't uncreate you. So you're going to be around and you're going to be around for a long time. <laughs> Would you say amen? amen? I told, so I've said it in this church before, but I said it somewhere also where I was dealing with this a situation of uh, someone said they don't like the other. I said, well, listen, I want you to look at this person. Look at them real well. I said, are you going to heaven? They say, yeah. I said, you're going to heaven? I said, yeah. Well, I said, Let, listen, I pray that God will make you next door neighbors when you get to heaven so that you're going to be around for a long time. And if you don't know how to get along on earth, <laughs> God help you because you're going to have eternity in heaven fighting against each other. And sometimes you hear me say, you better learn to get along with me. Learn to, listen, learn to accept this black face. Learn to accept this flat nose. Learn to accept whatever you call me. Learn to accept it because you're going to be seeing it for a long time. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Some of you just smiling. You know, I, I, there's a pastor that I met. He said, uh, I met him in Ukraine, right? He said uh, he was moving about and uh, people, he probably was walking in an area where they had never seen a black man before. And they came out on the road and they were, they, some would look at him. When he wants to look, they would run back inside. And, and, and some were reacted in certain ways. And he said some people were very negative. And some even came and they would throw things at him. And so when he noticed that everybody was looking at him and people were watching him, some were coming out and said, oh, they've not, I've never seen a black person. So he came out, he said he, he started dancing on the road. <laughs> he said he started dancing on the road. You've never seen a black man, see one now. You've never seen a black man, look at me now. Look at me now, because I'm going to be around for a long, long, long time. <laughs> So, when people sometimes react to you with negativity, just know it in your mind that even though they are negative, but for a long time, they're going to see you. And guess what? I love what the Bible says in the book of Psalms 23. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down. Come on now. Green pastures. And what does he do? Leads you beside still waters. It goes on and says, it says, um, sh he anoints my head, my cup, and then it says, surely. But there is a part where it says, thank you. He does what? Where? I thought it would be in the absence of your enemies. Where will he do it? So why the enemies are present, the Lord will anoint you. Why they are present, rejected, but what? Anointed. So everybody who is being negative about you, even why they are being negative, in their very presence, they will see God pouring oil on you. How many of you understand that was exactly what happened to David? That was exactly, you see all these things manifested in the life of David. In spite of the rejection, he would be anointed in the presence of those who rejected him. I pray that those who are being negative, every time they look at you, they will see the oil of God on your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So what else does the, does the spirit of rejection do? It attacks your identity. So the first one I just said, it attacks your worth. Second one, it attacks your identity. It makes you question who you are. And saints, the moment you walk into an identity crisis, it's a big problem. 
Identity crisis is a huge, huge problem. Do you understand that the biggest attack against mankind at the Garden of Eden was an attack on man's identity? See, when your identity is attacked, you are shattered. Completely shattered. Because the devil showed up and said to the woman, the day you eat from this tree, you will be like God, suggesting to the woman that she was not like God. And yet the Bible says, and God made man in his image and in his likeness. And here comes the devil saying, well, lady, you know, the day you eat from that tree, you'll be like God. In other words, suggesting you'll be what God said you already are. So the woman began to think, oh, so maybe I'm not really like God. So that was an attack on the identity of the woman. And from the moment the identity of man was attacked, we lost our connection. The reality of who we truly are, we lost it. And so when the spirit of rejection comes, its target is your identity. And there is a lot tied to your identity. Do you know what's tied to your identity? Boy, there's a lot tied to it. A lot is tied to your identity. There is no way you can operate in every authority that God has given you if you don't walk in your identity. Here's the thing. When God created man, the Bible says, let us make man in our image, identity. Then it said, let them have dominion, authority over all that we have created. So man was given an identity that enables him to operate in his authority. So when the devil begins to attack you with rejection, he is coming after your identity, but he's also coming after what? Your authority. So once you lose your identity, you lose your authority. Do you understand that in this life, identity is everything? Come on now. Identity is what? Everything. Do you know why we are saved? Because of identity. It's identity that brings us to the place of salvation. As many as receive him, he gave them what? Power to be what? Sons. What is son? Identity. To be sons of God. It's all about identity. If you, are, if you are not a son of God, you are not a child of God, then there's a problem with your identity. Are you still hearing me? A problem with your identity. If you're not a son, a child of God, you have an identity crisis. I tell you why a lot of young people, uh, some old ones too, move about flaunting their bodies freely, open, naked, and looking for attention, they have an identity crisis. Do you know that? You're not talking now. You don't, you don't want me to go there, right? Because it's your comfort zone. Am I? Am I? <laughs> That's why you find some people, they are comfortable going because they want attention. What, what, tell me why on earth should I dress half naked and be moving about and be okay with it? Why should I be revealing myself to people? Something that I should preserve for the one that is the one that I love. You know what I'm talking about? You're not, you guys are not talking yet. You would expose your body to everybody. I saw, I saw a lady expose all about it. I said, my husband likes it. I said, that was bad. Something is wrong with him. Something is wrong with that kind of husband. I said, my husband likes it. My husband likes it. I'm sure the husband doesn't. I just believe she is sitting on his head and said, this is how I want to be. Moving about, just opening yourself everywhere to everybody. It's an identity crisis. And I want to tell a lot of young, young ones that are here today. Let me tell you one thing. Any decent man, I'm telling you right now, any decent man, when they are looking for a woman to marry, they know which one they are looking for. I'm a man. A man can play with you, but when they, when they get serious, they will leave you. When they get serious, they just leave you alone. You know what I'm saying here? They can play games with you, jump around with you. They'll be telling you, ah, popcorn. And you say, yeah. <laughs> you, 
you get excited, they call you popcorn. <laughs> and, and you do all the crazy stuff and the person takes advantage of you. But when the person is done and he says, now nah, I want to settle, I'm looking for a wife. There is a, there's a language most young men use. I am looking for a wife. But there are guests because they know not every lady is a wife. Are you hearing me? Not every lady is a wife. And the sad thing is that it's mostly men that take advantage. Nah, the ladies. <laughs> See, some people come to me and they say, they, 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 they like to go to my wife, you know. My wife has that calling. I don't. She has that calling to talk to people. Oh, who are you marrying and all that. I don't have that calling. <laughs> when you find the one you're marrying, that's when you come to me. So, but here's the thing. When someone comes to me and they say, Pastor, what do you think of that lady? I look at the lady. I say, I think, I think, I think so wonderful about that lady. And it's because I've watched them, I see how they conduct themselves, I see how they, they carry themselves, I see a child of God. And I would say, I, you know that lady? I recommend that lady. There are some that will ask me, Pastor, what do you think about that lady? I say, you know that lady? Let's be praying for her. <laughs> there are some that will ask me, what do you think about that brother? I say, you see that brother? He's still a player. For the brothers, I'm very bold. Players, I just say, this one is a player. Not serious at all. If you have a dream for your life, run away from that one. Because there are some that will mess you up. How did I end up here, by the way? <laughs> and you guys are enjoying it. <laughs> I get back to my message. I got there through identity, yeah? Identity is the reason why we have all this crisis. Crisis. Identity crisis. May the Lord help us. Saints, I tell you one thing. See, the, 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 the biggest problem about man from the time that we fell, we got into sin. Let me tell you what really happened to us. Why we got to the state that we are in is because of rejection. Are you hearing me? Rejection. So the devil attacked our identity. And then it resulted to a massive rejection. From the very time God showed up, man began to run. And God will end up chasing us away. Because of sin. So sin literally pulled us away from God. Not just that he chased us away. But he pushed us away for a season to create a room for reconciliation. Because if we had stayed close to God, his righteousness and his justice would strike us dead. So he pulled us away to make room so that we can come back to him. But we, we really got, we, but when we were pulled away from God, we, we got into this state of rejection. And I'll tell you one thing. The, God created man with a desire put inside of us after God. So always we want the acceptance of Abba. Are you there with me? No, 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 no. I say, are you there with me? We always want the acceptance of Abba. Now you ask yourself the question, why did Adam run when God came to the garden? Because Adam knew he messed up. And he knew that the Abba was not going to accept what he did. So what did he do? He ran away because he knew he made a mistake. Because he wants to be accepted, yet he was running away. Why was he running? A sense of rejection came on him. Are you there with me? Rejection came on him, so he ran away. And that is what happens. A lot of us sometimes when we've done wrong, we begin to feel that sense of rejection. I know God doesn't want me because I did this, because I did that, because I did that. No, I know God doesn't want me. There are some of you who even come to church, but still you know, you're still saying to yourself, no, I know God doesn't really want me, but I'm still coming. I spoke to somebody this week who said to me, I know I'm so wrong. I, I don't even know if God can accept me. And I say, and you're coming here every day. And you're coming here every day. I said, you know what? The enemy has planted rejection in your heart. And it's trying to make you feel that no matter what you, that you now have to, uh, you have to perform for God's acceptance. No, Jesus has already performed for you to be accepted. So you don't need to perform for the acceptance of your father. 
Can I tell you something? I hear some parents. I know some parents, not every parent, but there are some parents who say, I disown you. Have you heard that before? Some parents say, I, from this day, I disown you. And I used to, I used to watch, I watched some movie uh, where the parents say, from this day, I disown you. The child says, oh, I have been disowned. I said, what foolishness. From this day, I disown you. To disown a child that you brought to this world means that you have to uncreate the child. The very fact that you brought the child to this world, no matter what you do, the child is your child. Saying I disown you does not stop that. The, your DNA is still running in that child. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I disown you from this day. What if God did that to us? From this day. No matter what a child does, we never get to the place where he says, from this day, I'll never be your father. From this day, I'll never be your daddy. What foolishness. What foolishness. No, I, I, I'm not talking about family today, but let me get on to where I'm going. But here's what I want to say. Here's what I want to say. Just as much as a parent can never disown a child, even though they say it, they can't. It's the same way that our Heavenly Father, are you hearing me? That is the same way our Heavenly Father always seeks to be there for us. There is not a thing you do that He doesn't want to be there for you. We always have to make the choice to come back to Him. He is always there, arms wide open to embrace you. It is the devil that is playing on our minds to tell us He will never accept you. He never rejected you in the first place. Are you still hearing me? There was not a day he stood out and said, from this day, because of what you did, now, uh, I don't know what your name is. He just called your name and said, from this day, I, your heavenly father, I disown you. He never did that. The time he would have done that, instead he sent his son to come die for you. So there is no divine disownership. You are always his child. And if you walk in the knowledge of that reality, of that truth, in the revelation of that truth, it establishes you as his child, not just now, but as his child throughout eternity. Would I hear you say amen? amen. My God, I went a complete different direction this morning. And I'm looking, my time is already catching up with me. Okay. <laughs> Can I share one or two other things with you? Quickly. Still talking about rejection. Do you know that there are several times David was rejected in his life? Number one, he was rejected at the very start of his life by his own family. Now, we are all born into families. God designed it that way. Because family should be the place where you are received, where you are accepted, where you are loved, where you are cared for. Remember when I talked about contending for the next generation. God designed it that we all come through families. And families... It's a divine design by God. He established it so that it will be the place where we provide love and many other things. The ideals and direction and so on and so forth. So family became the place where David was brought into. But the place where he was supposed to receive that love and that nurture, instead they rejected him. He began to experience rejection in his own family. Now you know that story. I will not take much time going there and talking about that but David was rejected in his own very family the place where he should have been most accepted you see the enemy is only trying to use moments like that to give you an excuse for failure and let me explain this when you begin to see that rejection happening, rejection, rejection, you all of a sudden say, well, then why should I care about anything? Why should I have any standard? Why should I do this? Why should I do that? When I'm going through this kind, when people treat me bad, I've got to behave anyhow. See, the enemy is trying to give you an excuse, a reason why you should throw down your guards and do anything, behave anyhow, go, go out of line and be stupid if you want to be stupid. You see, I see people all these kind of stories all the time. I watch them on shows, talk shows, and so on and so forth, a lot in the U.S. 
A young man will sit on the, on the television and will say to the, the host, you know, they ask him, why are you leaving so bad? Why did you do all this stuff? You've been in jail for this amount of years. What happened? And this, this, the, the person will say, you know, when I was 10, my dad left me. My mother did that. My brother did this one. And, and the, oh, is that a reason? You see, that's what the enemy does. He uses rejections like that. To make you get to a place where you begin to feel that you should never have a good life. But that is a lie. Are you hearing me? I'm, I have to address this because by the Holy Ghost, I was actually ministered to by the Lord. There are people who are suffering that. That you're having flashbacks of who left, who walked away, who didn't do something, who should have done something. And you, you're having pictures that are coming through your mind. Why it's not working out for you? Can I tell you this? No matter what happened, the rejections, the neglect, I want to tell you that you still have, let me tell you, it is not that that determines where you end. It is the oil of God on your life. So no matter who walked away, no matter who abandoned you, you can still live a great life. And I can tell you this by the way. There are other people I've seen who have used the same stories of neglect, rejection, and, and all of that as a springboard and as an inspiration to live a wonderful life. I had another person said, you know, they asked, oh, why are you doing what are you doing? You're caring for this, caring for your children, caring for neighbors, other children. And somebody would say, you know, when I was his age, my dad left me and I knew what, how bad it was as a little boy to try to struggle and live life on my own. So when I look at him right now with no dad, I understand what he's going through. And I've made a pledge to myself, I'll never watch any child go through what I went through. The same thing that the enemy is using to destroy somebody else's life, the same thing God is using to build another person's life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? D listen to me everything you want to point to as a reason why you should fail I can show you somebody who will point to the same thing as a reason why he should succeed you cannot pay attention to the voice of the devil my dad did this my mom did that there is oil that God wants to pour on your head can I really hear you say amen, amen. there's oil that God wants to pour on your head <laughs> oh God, there's still a lot I need to say on this. Uh, but I, I, I'll leave it alone. I'll leave it alone. You see in Psalm chapter 69 verse 21. It, you can read it at home. Basically, there is a suggestion by so many theologians that David was made as a child to eat separate from his brothers. That he wasn't eating, he wasn't eating at the, on, on the same table with his brothers. That the rejection was that bad. That he was pushed aside to a corner. To eat by himself. You read that psalm. It says that they put uh, gall in my food. And gave me vinegar for my, when, I, when I was thirsty. So even when it comes to feeding. He was not feeding like his brothers. They gave, what his brothers fed on. Was different from what they fed him with. The discrimination was so massive in David's life. Are you still there with me? I'm trying to show you many reasons why David should fail. But still he wouldn't fail. Still he wouldn't fail. It is also believed that David was assigned to pasture the sheep. You know, he was a shepherd. How many of you remember that? He was a shepherd. That he was assigned to pasture the sheep. That all of that was... A strategy to put him in a, in a terrain, a dangerous and treacherous place where he would be exposed to lions and bears that would kill him. That they didn't even want the guy. So the area where he was taking care of the sheep was a place that was known to be easily visited. And with, there were so many lion attacks. There were so many uh, bear attacks. And David was put in that place so that he would be exposed to all those attacks in his life. And that is why you read in the scripture, nobody knew nothing about what, how David was surviving. Not his brothers. Not, listen, if David's father knew how David was surviving, that he was killing lions and killing bears, by the time Samuel showed up in his house, he would say, wow, I have a son who fights lion. But they were ignorant about it. We only knew it when David showed up. And when they were doubting David, it became his testimony. The place where they dumped me for death became the place where God prepared for my 
Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I have a word for somebody right here. I have a word for somebody. You see the place where you feel that they left you for death? The place where they pushed you, a place of dejection and a place of rejection? God says that same place is your place of transformation. It is the place where God is going to walk in your life, build you and shape you to make you something that he wants to do in your life. So look at where they pushed David. That God used that place to shape him up. Every rejection is going to work out as a tool to transform you into who God wants you to be. Can I hear you say amen? amen. Well, you can read Psalm, 7, Psalm 17, 34 and 35. David gave the testimony of how he killed the lion and the bear to King Saul. Now, David was also rejected by King Saul. King Saul rejected David in Psalm 1 Samuel chapter 19, verse number 1. Saul told his son Jonathan and all the attendants to kill David. He gave them a clear instruction. Kill him. I don't want this guy. Kill him. A guy that actually delivered your kingdom from Goliath and the Philistines. You rejected him. Why? Jealousy. Because they were singing David has killed a thousand and Saul has killed. David has killed ten thousand and Saul has killed a thousand. He developed jealousy against David. And so he wanted David killed. He wanted him death, dead. But David, instead of dying, continued to prosper. In 1 Samuel chapter 27, verse 1 and 2, David thought of himself, one of those days, I will be destroyed by the hand of Saul. The best thing I can do is to escape to the land of the Philistines. Let me explain why, why I read that verse of scripture. He said, the best thing I can do is escape to the hands of the Philistines. Then Saul will give up searching for me anywhere in Israel. And I will slip out of his hand. So he took, he's gathered all his men. He said, you know what? I know the Philistines are our enemies. But the rejection I get from King Saul is so bad that I will run to the enemy's camp for safety. Can you imagine that? Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? That the rejection by King Saul was so bad that the entire Israel was not safe for David anymore. That David knew he could be assassinated anytime. So David said, I'd rather run to my enemies for safety and for, for security. How such rejection that you're running to the people that are supposed to hate you. The people that are supposed to be against you. And you say, please protect me. Such rejection. Think about it. So he's graduated from rejection from his own family, now to rejection by the king, by the, 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 king, the kingdom. And I can go on and on, saying there are many scriptures I can show you. You can go read them on by yourself. David as well ran to the enemy, but guess what? The enemy also rejects David. So he got a place where he settled quietly. They were scared of him. You can imagine, this is the guy who killed Goliath. This is a guy who actually brought the Philistines to their knees. And he's coming to them and saying, I'm looking for safety. So he got a corner. So they're scared of him also because he came with 600 men, warriors. They're scared of him. They said, this guy is deadly. Let's leave him there quietly. But when the Philistines had a battle, David said, I'll come help you because you allow me to stay. I'll come help you. The Philistines rejected him. They rejected him. So we don't want you. Rejection everywhere. Everywhere he goes. Rejection. You can find that in scripture. It's all there in the word of God. 1 Samuel chapter 29. Go read that whole chapter. 29. It's all there. 1 to 3. 6 to 8. It's all there. They said no, 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 no. We don't. Let me read 6 to 8. So they called David and said to him. As surely as the Lord leave it. You have been reliable and I would be pleased to have you serve with me in my army from the day you came until today. I have found no fault in you, but the rulers don't approve of you. They don't approve of you. Now turn back and go in peace. And do nothing to displease the Philistine rulers. He 
offered himself, let me fight with you. And actually it was a war against the Israelites. He said, I'll fight with you. The Philistines said, no, 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 you, this guy, we don't trust him. Keep him, go, tell him, he's been peaceful, but we don't want him. Let him go. And again, listen, let me close here, okay? Let me close here. David was anointed three times. How many times? Three times. Three times. Now, he was so rejected, but anointed how many times? Three times. Now, the first anointing was the anointing of the prophet Samuel that came from God. And that's called the anointing of appointment. Are you hearing me? Please, if you're writing, you want to write that one down. The anointing of appointment is found in 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse number 13. The anointing of appointment. What is that anointing? It is the anointing that God releases on your life to determine who you will become. Are you hearing me? God releases that anointing on your life and that anointing speaks of your destiny. It speaks of your assignment. It speaks of your future. Once that anointing is released on your life, God has already predetermined and ordained where you're going to end. And in spite of all the rejection that David will go through, that anointing will go will carry him through all the rejection to get him to the place where God has preordained for his life. The anointing of appointment. Can I tell you? Every one of you seated here, you are appointed to a specific assignment in your life. You are, anoint, you are, you are anointed to fulfill something. God have you here on earth because you are anointed to fulfill a specific task. David was anointed to fulfill a task. Second anointing, David was anointed by the people of Judah. So Israel, when Saul the king had died, the people of Judah anointed David. Now that's found in 2 Samuel chapter 2 and verse number 4. The anointing of the people of Judah is the anointing of acceptance. Acceptance. So when they saw the anointing of appointment that was on David, listen, every time you look at David, you could not deny that David will become king. It was predictable. Everybody could see it in his life in spite of the rejection. And the more reason why they rejected him was because they saw the destiny that was on his life. It was all an attack against what God wanted to do with the young man. So when Saul himself, the king, had seen that David was ascending and someday will become the king, Saul said no. In fact, the scripture says it. Saul says no. Someday this guy will become king. He will take, he will take the throne. He will take my throne. He would deprive my children from the throne. I got to kill him. I've got to kill him. Can I tell you? Sometimes the reason why the enemy is attacking you is because he, he can see what God is intending to do in your life. Oh, some of you are not catching it. You're not catching it. I'm giving you a revelation. The bigger your attack, is, the, it's speaking of how great the future and the oil that you carry on your head is with this is is speaking of what God intends to do in your life speaks of the kind of attacks that will come against you so if you're having a little attack it's saying well you just have a little thing to fulfill but if your attacks are becoming too big it's because where God is taking you is also too big are you hearing me somebody so when I begin to see levels of attacks coming against me I begin to say wow what a revelation where I'm going is gonna be great because it's a sign that God has greatness written on my life. So when David is being attacked, it's all speaking of the greatness that God had on his life. This guy will become king. They tried to stop him. But they couldn't. Because the oil was on his head. It's only a matter of time. The anointing of appointment is going to attract the anointing of acceptance. And after some time, David will be anointed king of Judah. But the rest of Israel will not anoint him yet because Saul's son, one of his sons, will continue to reign as king. Then the Bible will tell us after about seven years plus, after Saul died, almost eight years, seven years, six months thereabout, David will eventually become anointed as well king of Israel and become the leader of the entire nations. 
second samuel chapter 5 and verse number 3 you can go read that at home as well he would eventually be anointed by the elders of israel and the entire nation is brought under the leadership of david saints here is what i want to conclude no matter who rejects you and no matter where they reject you as long as you already have the anointing of appointment it's only a matter of time it's only a matter of time they can reject you all they want but when god's timing is right no rejection will stop you from rising to where god wants you to be nothing will hold you back nothing will stop you but there's one thing you got to do stay on the lord keep your focus on him keep serving him and keep doing right by god don't allow anything to tilt your focus to the left nor to the right be faithful to he who has called you that anointing will speak on your life no matter who re rejects you denounces you denies you they still cannot stop the purpose of god that is on your life as long as god has anointed you and ordained you for a cause so i'm speaking to you today speaking up and calling forth all that god has anointed you for that nothing will hold it back in the name of jesus you know there's some people who stand up now please there's some people who probably you're looking at your life you're looking at where you are right now you're saying to yourself well listen i've lived all this why nothing happened i have only this amount of time to leave how, how am i sure this is gonna work out saints it is not you that's supposed to work it out the god who anointed you is more than able to make everything work out for your good so as i speak right now i'm speaking into the destiny that god has for your life i'm speaking into the future that god has for your life i'm speaking to the assignment and the purpose that god has for your life and i'm commanding in the name of jesus that the oil of god will begin to run over you and i pray that every spirit of rejection and inhibitions and obstacles that are standing on your path will respond to the anointing that is on your life i speak forth in the name of jesus that as you go forth in the name of the lord standing on that which god has commanded you to do there will be nothing that will be able to stop you or hinder you and even though the enemy will raise obstacles stumbling blocks on your path to his glory all those things will become part of god's design to groom you and prepare you for the time you rise to your throne saints i didn't have the time to show you how different david was to saul because of that moment of preparation as a result of rejection that god used that moment to transform this young man that at the time listen i just tell you one do you know that when saul the king died if you were the one and you were david remember you ran away because that king wanted to kill you now you heard saul died what would you do you would celebrate you would dance around but when saul died david tore his clothes he cried no not not crocodile tears Three tears he got so mad that the man who brought the news to him told him I killed him I helped the, I helped to kill the king thinking that he will gain acceptance David said you were not afraid to touch him I David had the opportunity to kill him I didn't kill him and you went and killed him God's anointed did you know all this why I've just been waiting for God's time that God knows how to take him out by himself the anointing on my life does not make me act wrong are you there with me somebody it doesn't make me do the wrong stuff the fact that I'm anointed doesn't mean I take advantage of people the anointing makes me walk right with God and so what did David do he said for what you have done I am alive to avenge for that wrong so I will kill you for that and he killed him he was a different man I pray the anointing on your life will make you different my God are you ready to receive that this morning I said may the anointing on your life make you different may you walk different may you talk different may you act different in the name of Jesus this anointing is going to cause you to rise beyond all obstacles of your life 
everything the enemy puts as an obstacle I declare this day by reason of the oil that is on your life may you overcome it in Jesus mighty name raise your hand and begin to thank God for it come on thank God for it thank God for it Lord we thank you Lord we thank you Lord we thank you we receive of this anointing and we begin to declare that the spirit of rejection is broken it will not be able to hold us or hinder us from fulfilling our mandate our calling our purpose our assignment we ask you in the precious name of jesus as our hands are lifted to you father god let everything that cons consists of an obstacle in our path let those things bow to the anointing of god that is on our lives i pray that every obstacle is converted my god into a blessing everything that was meant to be an evil we speak for this day curses and turn to blessing by reason of the anointing that is on our lives in jesus most precious name we thank you as we receive this today that we shall see our lives on the rise thank you for answer prayer thank you for answer prayer in jesus precious name put your hands down i want you all to pray this prayer with me say dear jesus in sincerity I come to you I surrender my life I commit myself to you acknowledging that you are my Lord and my Savior I believe you died for me on the cross you shed your blood for me I put my trust in you I ask you from the bottom of my heart forgive me all my sins cleanse me of all my wrongs and make me a true child of God from this day I choose to follow you I am I'm a child of God I am born again I am washed in the blood I am saved by grace thank you for saving me amen amen give Jesus a praise amen Now, just before you take your seat, may I ask, how many of you made, you prayed this last prayer and you made a commitment to Jesus and this is the moment you've actually decided, I'm going to serve God. Anybody like that? I see one hand there. Give God praise. I see another hand. Give God, I say, give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Hallelujah. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Those of you who raise hands, please. Make sure you shake me before you go, okay? I love to shake hands with you. Now turn to the person on the other side. Take one hand. Say to them, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life until Jesus comes. Say one more thing to them. And in Jesus' name, the oil on your head will never run dry every obstacle you face you will overcome and in jesus name this is the season for your rising would you say amen give god a praise amen amen now just while before we go i have one very important announcement how many of you remember 